Hey guys, I'm Jacob. I'm Bobby. And today we're gonna make a song, but we're gonna only use recorded samples from these two chickens. <laughs> cool, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, sample these rubber chickens. As you can see, Jacob's in the booth over there. Hey. And let's get the sampling. Cool, so we need a variety of sounds here. Um, I guess let's first, let's get some basic squawks. Rolling for squawks. Give me a nice long drawn out squawk. Okay. Ooh, I like the little uh, puberty um, squawk. Wonderful. Okay, continue tenderizing. Got it. I guess last thing would be, uh, just give me obnoxious chicken sound. You wanna make sure to properly gain stage your various rubber chicken noises. All right, we are back. Uh, we gathered all of our samples. We got 15 individual samples here. So based off of these uh, sounds, we're gonna create a whole bunch of sounds for us to use. We're gonna create some drums, we're gonna create some various instruments, some keys for you to play. Yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab one of these random samples. We're gonna make a kick drum, for example. Uh, let's grab long squeak one. Let me loop this. That's nice, isn't it? So we'll use pulverizer for this, a reason classic. We'll crank the uh, the peak, which is the resonance on this, and we'll also automate the frequency. Let's take a listen to this. So you can hear how it has like that deep, meaty sound to it. Now we'll just kind of shape this into what we want our kick drum to sound like. We can have it sweep down a little faster. So this as like a starting point, I think is great. Um, what I like to do is I like to commit. So it's a lot of committing and moving forward. So we're gonna chop off the end here. We'll chop off that initial squeak. Like yeah. the dog toy sound? Exactly, yeah, yeah, we don't want that in there. Yeah. We'll get rid of that, we'll get rid of that ending there. We'll fade out the end. We probably don't need that very beginning. I think that is still some dog squeakiness there. Cool, let's add some EQ to this now. So I'll typically scoop out the mids within my kick drum, maybe boost the high end a little bit. And then I like to saturate. One of my favorite saturators is the soft tube saturation knob. With the keep low setting on, we will maintain the overall thickness while adding a bit of saturation to the high end. Then I'll duplicate this EQ, make ourselves a little point, and we'll bounce in place again. So you might start thinking something's like, oh, this is gonna be a great snare drum, but then maybe it turns out to be a tom. something else, a tom or a kick drum, yeah. or you stretch it and turn it into a a pad, like an instrument or something. Do you want to do that? Why not? Let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. Sound design is like playing Oregon Trail. You know you're going west, but you don't know how you're going to get there yet. <laughs> oh. So actually, the more I listen to this, this might make a cooler tom than a kick drum. Hmm. Should we go with that? Because we don't have a tom sound yet. Yeah, let's do it. Sweet. Okay, cool. Uh, we need some like white noise over this, though. So we'll do scream. You love, this. you love this one, right? I really do. I think Scream is like one of the best distortion units out there. We'll just duplicate this a few times, and then maybe throw in some reverb, and more distortion, and more reverb, and one more distortion. Because <laughs> you can never have enough distortion. Actually, okay, so that's, that's kind of a cool start. It is. Let's uh, throw, let's render this in, in uh, place, and we'll just grab like this section right here. Cool, let's grab some EQ. We'll shove off all that low end, we'll bump some high end, add a bit more distortion. Click yes. <laughs> cool, so we're gonna process these two sounds together. We have our white noise and we have the body of our tom. I almost always grab an EQ first, just to do a little bit of cleanup. Mm -hmm. Maybe scoop some mids. Let's grab a kilohertz faturator. This is a fun one. Put the mix at like 50%. And we'll slowly bring up the drive to taste. There we go. Now for creating other toms, would you typically just like create your main one and then just like pitch shift? Just because you basically, you want it to sound like the same drum. Yeah. Just at different pitch levels. Think of like one of those old school drum machines. Yep. We're just, we're just recreating the, the initial patch for that. Yeah. It's crazy to think about what you started with. And like that's what we've got now. <laughs> yeah. We normalize it so it's nice and loud. Maybe bring a little bit off the front. Yeah, that way we have more, more body, less attack. Cool. Shall we make something melodic? Let's do it. Cool. Uh, so we've got long squeak two here, which sadly isn't super long. 
but we can turn this into something a lot more melodic. So I like to stretch things out whenever I'm making a more melodic patch, and I like to try different stretching algorithms. No matter what DAW you are using, it's going to have a few various algorithms in there that you can try out. For example, stretch and, stretch and transpose type, we can go to melody instead. Okay, I love that thing it did at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's the chicken air horn. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. We could also try, um, for a lot of melodic patches, I tend to like vocal. Specifically because within Reason, you have the option to open up this pitch edit mode. Which then we can lock this to a pitch. So let's bounce this in place, and we'll start working with this a bit closer. So we've got the pitch edit opened up. We can lock it to a C4. That way when we import the sample into our sampler, it's all going to be mapped properly to the keyboard. So we'll take our long squeak C and dump it into our sampler, the NNXT. You want to play something real quick? Yeah. I want to give it a bit of attack on the filter. So right okay. now we've lowered the low pass filter a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to route this envelope. It's kind of chorusy. Did you put a chorus on it? I did. Yeah. Yeah. So here's one of those other patches that that we made earlier. I like that. I like how it's up high, it's got like a little like kind of distorted kind of thing lower. Oh yeah. It's like an like three octaves below or something. And that's like a little happy accident that happens when you start sampling things. Right. You know, you'll you'll use familiar tools, but not necessarily get the exact results you were going for. And the results that you get along the way are gonna dictate the decisions you make as you move forward. So it's truly a journey. It is. It is Oregon Trail. It is Oregon Trail. I I like this one. I like that. I, I like this patch a lot. Cool. Well, we got some awesome sounds. Want to make some music? I'm ready. Sweet. Let's get into it. Hey, Jacob. Hey. You want to make some some music? Yeah. Sweet. Here we go. Okay. Woo. I like that like step up thing you had there. Da -da -da -da. So yeah, I mean, when I'm writing stuff, sometimes it's like a beat and a groove and we have something that we were messing around with already that we like, but being a piano player, like a lot of times like two handed voiced chords are like kind of where the progressions grow. And sometimes what happens too is like the top voice of that progression will kind of become sort of a melodic voice. And then maybe we can go through and separate that two staff piano type part into like bass, a chordal part, and then like a lead part. And then maybe slap some other fun sounds on there too. I like that plan, yeah. Cool. Let's get to it. I'm sort of trying to find something that's in that sound. So like if I'm kind of thinking that my, that's sort of my. So it's a little bit major -y, but it's kind of dark and minor at the same time. Yeah. So I'm mixing the modes a little bit and getting like a. Or before I think. So I kind of hear like that progression could almost be like its own little loop that just kind of creeps in. Yeah, I like that idea. Let me give you, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna do a, a quick little bit of stuff to uh, help um, set the mood for you. That big clap verb thing that we made earlier, uh, we'll throw just a bunch of reverb on it just to kind of have a, a bit of a down lifter.
perfect. And then we can chop that right there. I love the shape of that. Yeah, we made, some, we made some toms that we never did use yet. This is true. Yeah. Can we see what we got here? Yeah. Chicken tom. So I'm actually just gonna solo this part out with a click track for you, just, just to come up with a weird tom fill. Right. I think that was the one right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the one I was trying to get. <laughs> it's like a sax player. I one. hate that. It really is. It sounds like a trumpet, kind of. <laughs> okay, so I just left you for like a minute, and you did some magical things while I was gone. And yeah. You have you have to play this intro again because, and then you have to explain what the heck you did. Okay, so what is that? So basically what happened, if this is your if if this if this chicken head is the MIDI information that you had played in on keys one, okay. I then took both the MIDI information as well as the bounced audio information and flipped them both back around. So our bounced audio information is now reversed, but still playing the chords in the correct order. So is it like you're layering forward and backwards at the same time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um I'm just taking the MIDI, re reversing that, bouncing that down, and then reversing them both back to normal. Gotcha. Except, except one's playing the audio backwards, but the chords are correct. I do want to do one thing with you before we, before we wrap this for sure. Because okay. I think it's going to flip your mind in the way that you might think at times, in a fun way. Oh, there's a really cool rack extension inside of uh, Reason 12 called Mimic. So it's Mimic Creative Sampler. So obviously we're doing a lot of sampling in this. Um, you can almost think of this as like your more classic MPC style sampling with uh, slicing. So I just took, took your chords and I just want you to kind of try this and hear what it sounds like. Go into slice mode. Uh, play a little bit down at like C. I oh, need to go down two octaves. Try that. Essentially, it's like you sampled my live performance. Because that would never be something I could have come up with. Keep that going real quick. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, <laughs> uh, let's go back to this lead sound. It's like uh, it's like lead synth Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Did you mean to do that? This was a lot less like. This one was a lot less process sound design, it's literally just one of the squeaks. Yeah. Just dumped into the sampler. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. So again, it's like improvising shapes or improvising ideas that may work. But now you can fix me. I'm not fixing you. Like I said, I'm just augmenting you. Augmentation. That's exactly... Yeah. Please don't hate me. I could never hate you, Bobby. I mean, I always love like a little like, let's break it down to halftime. It always sounds good. I don't know if I've found situations where it doesn't work. Usually sounds pretty good. And now we've kind of got a shape. How much does like, like how much does changing the sound during the sound design process 
affect how you play your instrument? A lot. You want the sound to start inspiring you from the beginning. Essentially what I look at this is like this sound you've created is its own instrument. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I do kind of think in terms of like real instruments or like electroacoustic. Maybe this is kind of like what an organ would do or this is kind of like what my piano would do. It's a hard thing to put your finger on. But again, yeah. like you said earlier in this, it's like it's just all about moving stuff around and sometimes letting intuition guide you until you've got the right thing. And you don't have to explain it more than just like, I've got the right thing now. I can move ahead. As long as you don't die of dysentery. Dysentery. As long as you're not on the organ trail and you don't die of dysentery, you'll be fine. Yeah. I will say one thing that, I, that I've noticed throughout today, like I'll make a sound, you'll play something, and I've noticed myself adjusting the sound design based off of what you've played. I, th I think it was actually the way that you were working the pitch band. It reminded me because I'm a I, I'm a gu a guitarist um, at heart. So hearing those pitch bands, it, it just reminded me of immediately just going brown 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 type yep. of thing. Yep. And definitely when I'm doing these lead type things, that's why I love what you did with the guitar amps because I I'm trying to think like a, a guitar player, maybe even more than a keyboardist when I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, because like obviously that's something you can't really do. Like I can do that on like a piano, but. Like the, the elements of like being able to add blues flair and like more soulful things mm -hmm. just like completely opens up when yeah. you have a pitch band. It's a new expression. Yes. Guitar like. All right. So I think we've got some really great ideas. I think the makings of a great song, but obviously one, we can't sit here in one video and write the whole thing. You've gotten a bit of the appetizers, but in a few days we'll have essentially the main course finished and we'll have this essentially completed song. You know, hopefully a couple minutes, three minutes, we'll see what we come up with. We'll let it, again, we'll just, you know, let it sit in a bag in the fridge and just get all nice and juicy. So it's gonna be ready and it's gonna be great because your sounds are great and I think we've got some nice ideas. So now we're gonna fast forward and play the final song, which doesn't have a name yet, but it'll have a name by the time you're watching it. Here you go. Man, that was fun. Dude, that was so much fun. I loved watching these musical ideas hatch and really spread their wings. Yeah, I think we got like a really good seasoning on the overall track. Mm -hmm. Thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. I hope you learned something and had a little fun with us too. If you want to cook up your own music with these same rubber chicken samples, check the link below. Thanks again. See you next time. <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs>